Okay, so this one just looks like fun, but we are going to have to do a little bit of doodling on it. All right. The statement reads, a square loop of side A, again, square loop, it'll come in handy, is mounted on a vertical shaft and rotated at angular velocity omega. A uniform magnetic field B points to the right. Find the EMF as a result or as a function of T for the alternating current generator. Ooh, it's going to be cool. All right, let's draw it out. So we have a magnetic field B um, going to the loop where we have length A, width A, and it's rotating at some uh, angular velocity omega. And you see we have a couple contact points below it. It's a pretty cool diagram. But uh, let's see here that what we need to understand is that we know that for the flux rule to work, we have to have B dot DA. But since B is uniform, that can come out the integral, and we're just left with the integral uh, DA, which we know is the vector area. So let's go back to our diagram, and we see that the vector area, well, you see that the field is going to be hitting, as we look to it from the right, it's going to be hitting at a couple angles as it's spinning. So we can't just say that it's uh, B times A squared, or the area of the loop, because as we're hitting it from, um, as we're looking at it from above, rather, we see that we're going to hit at some angle. We're not always going to be perpendicular, so we have to account for that angle. Okay, so instead of A, the vector area going to A squared, it needs to have a cosine in there, which will take care of everything else later. But we know here that cosine is equal to omega t, because what is omega? That's just radians per second, so if I multiply by seconds, I get radians. So unit-wise, we're good to go. And we know that, uh, the therefore, the uh, flux is equal to BA squared cosine omega t. So if we're trying to find the EMF as a, as a function of t, just take the negative derivative of this. And we see that we get negative BA squared times negative sine squared, because cosine goes to negative sine. Omega t, you use chain rule, you get omega. And then simplify it down, and you see that the EMF is equal to B omega uh, A squared sine omega t. Probably seen this before in the alternating current sections of earlier books, but here's where we get it from.